Hey guys, welcome back to my second channel. I feel like lately I've really wanted to do a ton of videos that I feel like are not super suitable for my main channel. So shout out to you if you're watching me on my second channel right now. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do a bunch of different stuff on here. Beauty related videos, uh, personal videos. Today's video is about hormones in regards to my transition. If you're new to this channel, I'm a transgender woman and part of that is taking hormones. I get a lot of people asking me about hormones. What do I take? How much do I take? Um, what does it involve? What are the changes in my body? Uh, what does it really do for you? A lot of trans people want to know because maybe they're new in their transition and a lot of non-trans people want to know because they're just some curious Georges. First and foremost, do not self-medicate. If you self-medicate, you're a dumbass. Point blank period, you're a dumbass. A lot of trans people have died or had really serious health complications from self-medicating and just getting hormones you know, through the black market or from online. And so it's not something I suggest, it's something I actually suggest against. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out. So before I talk about what hormones have done for my body and my appearance, I'm gonna show you guys what hormones I take. So the first thing I take is spironolactone. So spironolactone is basically a testosterone blocker. This doesn't give me estrogen, but it definitely uh, blocks my testosterone, which makes room for the estrogen to come in. And these are 100 milligram tablets, and I take them uh, twice a day, one in the morning, one at night. So along with that, I have estradiol. Estradiol is, as you probably guessed, estrogen. They are two milligram tablets, and I take one tablet twice a day, morning and night as well. Now here's something my doctor prescribed me that I feel like a lot of trans people don't take. It's called finasteride. So finasteride is basically for your hair health and to ensure you don't bald, which estrogen helps a lot with that. But this is basically just insurance that, you know, going forward in the future, even though I'm on hormones, this keeps my hair healthy and it keeps it full and it prevents balding in the long term. I'm not balding now, uh, but it's something I never want to happen. So this keeps that from happening. So here are the physical changes. I wrote down hairline and hair quality. So my hairline before I started estrogen was janky. Like my hairline was literally about to here. It was terrible. Like I was quite literally balding and estrogen definitely helped with that. It turned back the clock, honestly. I started noticing like baby hairs growing in and my hairline lowering within a few months of being on estrogen. Now it only did so much. I did have actually a hairline lowering surgery a few years later after I started estrogen. Um, but it definitely helped. Like I got a good like inch of baby hair growth, which made a huge difference um, in my hairline presentation. So hair quality is also what changed. So my hair, when I am not on hormones, is so oily. Like literally, I can wash my hair with the most drying of dry shampoos, and within three hours, my hair my hair looks like it's wet because it's just so oily. And that completely changed when I went on estrogen. My hair got a lot silkier, a lot smoother, and the oil takes a lot longer to take place in my hair. Next thing I wrote is my face. So my face changed quite a bit with hormones. Before I went on hormones, my face was a lot more angular. Like my jaw was a lot more pronounced. I had like no cheek fat and things were just really different on my face in terms of fat distribution. So I got a lot more fat here in my, the apples of my cheeks. I also got fat along the jawline, which I really, really needed because my jaw was just all bone and it was really, really sharp before. Now, one thing hormones do not do is change the bone structure in your face. So for me, it did mask the bone structure a little bit in terms of fat on the jaw, but obviously it didn't change the structure of the bone. So I've had facial feminization surgery, which I had my brow bone done, I had my nose done, um, and my hairline, like I said. The reason I did that surgery is because no matter how much hormones I took, it was never, ever gonna change the structure of my brow bone. And my profile before it was really, really pronounced in terms of this. It was very masculine looking. And then my nose as well had a very masculine look to it as well. So I needed to do that just because obviously hormones were not gonna fix the bones in my face. The next thing I have is body fat. So when you're on estrogen, you gain hella weight. <laughs> um, I started gaining weight about six months into taking hormones and a lot of that weight has really stuck to me. Um, I'm by no means fat. I'm still a relatively thin person, but before I was on hormones, I was so thin. I'm going to put a picture of my legs before I went on hormones in here. It's kind of insane how skinny they were. I had the worst chicken legs and that was the first place estrogen put fat on my body, which is my legs, which I really, really needed because my legs did not look feminine at all and now they're a lot better looking. Only place that didn't give me fat was my boobs. So I got no breast growth from hormones, like none. I had enlarged nipples and that's about it. No breast growth, so I had to get implants. And I have a whole video on my surgeries I'll put in the description, but 
um yeah i had no restroom next thing is body hair so body hair was definitely changed a lot for me before i went on hormones i was by no means an extremely hairy person but i definitely had really hairy legs um and over time you know this is a change that took about a year plus to really really take effect was my body hair reduced quite a bit so um it used to be when i shaved my legs before i went on estrogen the hair would be there that night like i'd have a five o'clock shadow on my freaking legs um now i can shave my legs and not worry about it for a few days which is great skin so your skin definitely gets a lot softer on estrogen you're just a lot smoother which is great um not really much else to say for that veins okay so this is something that i know is true but that i have not had validated by a doctor but before i went on hormones my arms used to be so veiny my legs as well like literally just bulging veins in my hands and my arms and my legs and it was very very masculine looking and that changed really really quickly when i went on hormones before i went on hormones all of this would just be veins and veins and veins and part of it was being a lot skinnier as well before i went on hormones like if you look at like really skinny guys their arms are really really veiny but if you look at really skinny girls their arms usually aren't like that because i think it is like a male thing um but that went away pretty quickly too next thing is butt so that kind of goes along with um fat distribution with hormones but my butt got like a lot bigger i had the boniest ass ever ever okay so that's pretty much it in terms of physical changes honestly everything else i had to tweak with surgery um, hormones don't affect your voice. That's a really common misconception. For male to female. For female to male, it definitely affects your voice, the testosterone. But for male to female, you have to definitely, if you don't have a voice that you feel like is passable or feminine, you definitely have to um, go to a coach for that, I think. But for me, I never had to do that. Okay, so now on to the emotional and mental changes. So I became a completely different person when I went on hormones. And maybe that sounds scary to some people, but for me, I was changed only in positive ways. Before I went on hormones, I was a lot more immature. Um, I had less of a positive outlook on life. I had less of a structured plan for my future. But it was like overnight that when I started taking hormones, maybe it was just the shift in me taking control of my own life and my own destiny. But ever since then, I've been a really hard worker and I've known exactly what I wanted in life. And like before that I had no direction in life. You definitely become a lot more emotional when you're on hormones, especially if you're not super consistent with it. I have found that my emotional stability isn't rocky when I'm on estrogen flat out, like really consistently. The emotions and the mood swings actually come when I'm not being consistent. So if I miss a day or two, a couple days, or if I, you know, don't take the right dose or whatever, if I'm not at the right level, that's when the mood swings come. When I'm consistent with my hormones and, um, you know, not forgetting them, whatever. My mood's actually perfect. So estrogen itself, I feel like doesn't make me moody. And about a year or so into taking hormones, I actually started thinking about kids. Like I started thinking about having a family and my biological clock, as they say, started ticking. So that was a feeling that didn't come before hormones. Like I, I did not want kids at all, but now I want kids. I can like literally watch a video on YouTube of like, this is going to sound so corny, but I watch videos of like animal mothers giving birth like a cow giving birth or an elephant giving birth and i will bawl like i will cry so hard because i think it's so beautiful and i know i would not be like that before i went on hormones so that's one thing so i know everyone talks about like oh hormones make you so emotional they do but only when i get to a certain point like if i'm sad which is kind of rare I get really sad on hormones. If I'm happy, I'm really happy. You know what I mean? It's more of extreme emotions. It's not necessarily like me constantly being upset or emotional or crying. So let's talk about some things that hormones do not affect. So a lot of trans people online will have you believe hormones do all these crazy things and I just get so annoyed by that. I'm gonna give you guys the real. Hormones, like I said, do not affect your bone structure. Hormones do not give you very much breast growth unless you do it when you're really young, like 13, 14, etc. If you do it in your 20s or later, like you'll be really lucky to have any growth. So I needed implants because I started at 20. Hormones do not affect your voice if you are a trans woman. If you're a trans man, your voice will likely be affected by testosterone. What else? Height. Hormones do not affect your height. They don't make you shorter, don't make you taller. The only thing that they do in terms of height is if you start it when you're really, really young, like I said, 13 or 14, it's gonna stunt your growth and you're gonna probably be the average height of the average female. But if you start later than that, then it doesn't do anything for you. I honestly do feel like hormones are very necessary in a transition. Like hormones change a lot of things about you, but only in subtle ways. But all that adds up to kind of a large change. Surgeries change one thing about you in really large ways. 
But that's about it for this video, you guys. Leave a comment and let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see on the second channel. So I love you guys and I will see you in the next video.